Hi, Pranati. Can you please talk about uh, what uh, we can do with the help of Chrome Options? So Chrome Options is uh, basically uh, we can use for uh, um, perform headless browser flow. So if we want to execute any test scripts in headless mode, then we can use Chrome Options. Also, um, this uh, options can be used for uh, um, disable any uh, geolocation or uh, uh, disable any um, like voice. So whenever uh, we get any uh, like whenever we open any website, we will be getting right. So uh, it's uh, it's asking us to allow the voice, the, like the mic or the video or a location. So if we want to handle those, we can use options. Home options. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Uh, can you also tell me uh, what are the ways by which we can achieve the synchronization in Selenium? Yeah, so we can use weights for that to achieve a synchronization and. Uh, um, we have three types of weights basically uh, in Selenium, which is an implicit weight, explicit weight, and a fluent weight. So implicit weight is like a global weight, which will be applicable to all the elements. So if we write one time, so it will be applicable to each and every element, like find element and find elements. And it won't be applicable for any classes like select class or actions class. So it will be applicable only to the elements. And we have a for that implicit weight, uh, the polling period is 500 milliseconds. And uh, mm. if the element doesn't, uh, uh, come with that uh, polling time. So if the element is not located uh, within the time, whatever we mentioned in the implicit weight, then we will be getting an exception. So which is a no such element exception. And we have another type of uh, a weight, which is a uh, web driver weight. So basically this web driver weight is like, um, so we can do use uh, for the next element. So if you want to uh, perform any actions or if you want to locate any uh, element, then we can use this weight just before that uh, uh, element so that it will be applicable only to that particular element. And uh, here um, we have um, like uh, uh, it will be applicable for everything, even this uh, seller class or uh, actions class uh, and everywhere. So here the polling period is same, like uh, 500 milliseconds. And if the element I couldn't find within that uh, the time, whatever we mentioned um, in the web driver weight, then uh, it will return an exception called a timeout exception. And uh, when coming to the syntaxes, so implicit weight is something looks like a driver dot minus dot timeout dot implicitly weight uh, and then duration dot off seconds. So we can mention that time, how much time it has to wait for an element to load. And then uh, for explicit weight, uh, uh, we have a syntax something like web driver weight and the reference variable is equal to web driver, a new web driver weight. So we have to create the object for our web driver weight. And it is a two dimensional one. So we need to pass two parameters. So driver and then uh, duration dot off seconds. And in off seconds, we can give uh, the seconds how much time it has to wait. So and we have uh, like with the reference variable, we can call uh, like until uh, expected conditions. And then we can give the methods. It's this expected conditions is having a lot of methods like alert is present or element to be uh, visible, visibility of element or visibility and uh, URL contains, URL uh, is, title contains, title is like we have n number of uh, methods in that. And uh, coming to fluent weight. So here we can handle exception handling because in uh, both weights like implicit and explicit we don't have uh, an option to handle the exceptions but in fluent weight we have an option to handle the exception also we can use polling period as a, a like um, we are hard coding the po polling period here how much time it has to check like uh, if i give polling period as two seconds then it will check for every two seconds whether the web, web uh, element is located or not and the syntax is, looks something like fluent weight and then uh, um, the web driver, um, the reference variable equal to new fluent weight web driver. And then uh, um, we have to use dot with timeout duration dot off seconds dot polling every duration of off seconds and dot ignoring the exceptions, whatever, like no such element dot class or dot ignoring uh, uh, timeout exception dot class. So whatever the uh, exceptions we want to handle, we can add there so that it will handle the uh, exceptions. And the, with the reference variable, same, we have to call them um, with the me multiple method, like uh, wait dot until expected conditions dot all the list of uh, like methods. OK. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Can you also tell me how do you handle uh, multiple multiple Windows browser in Selenium? Multiple Windows, okay. So, f firstly, we have to switch to that particular window. Hmm. So for that, we have to use a driver dot switch to uh, the window. 
and then the window name will we will be getting from the uh, like uh, from the method called driver dot get window handles. So this driver dot get window handles will give us the set of all the windows whatever is open. So it can it the every window will be having a unique ID. So uh, it should be the written type of that should be a set of string and string is the ID whatever we are getting. So it is alphanumeric. That's the reason we have to give it as a string and a set of string uh, that uh, whatever the reference variable whatever we want is equal to driver dot get window handles and then we have we can we can use iterator to iterate so we have uh, like has next has next uh, method in iterator so to iterate from one uh, like it will give the ids of uh, next uh, windows so uh, reference variable dot has next if you give then it will give the uh, reference id of uh, like a reference uh, what is that id of the parent window and then iterator dot and has next will give the reference id of the next child window it it will be like that based on that we can traverse from one window to another window Okay. Praniti, uh, how do you decide which test case to automate and which one to do it later? Yeah. So basically, uh, we cannot 100% uh, uh, automate everything. So we have to do a uh, manual also, but the automation can be preferred to the test cases, whatever is repeated. So like regression testing. So we have to test uh, whenever uh, uh, a code is uh, deployed, like a new feature is added and it is deployed, then we have to test the future, like the past uh, functionality of the application also. So basically if we use, uh, uh, like it will be very helpful if we use for a regression testing and also for sm uh, smoke and system level scenarios also we can test. So because end-to-end -end flow, we will be checking there. And we can also check, do for integration because one function, one module can be depend on the other module. And in automation, we can perform like uh, after clicking on this, uh, am I getting uh, another tab or not? Like that, we can test. Okay. And if we don't have a time, then we can go for exploratory testing. No, got it. No, I'm saying, uh, how do you decide that out of a lot of types of testing types that you have? Uh, mm -hmm. in your organization, which one to automate first? And how will you pick which scenario to automate first? So will okay. you automate a component scenario first or integration scenario first or okay. system okay. scenario first or regression scenario first or smoke scenario first? And how will you choose which one to automate first? Okay. So uh, basically, uh, system level testing we will do to test uh, like end to end flow and then we will be going going to like if you see v model like system will come first like we will be preparing component test cases at the first and then uh, our integration we will be preparing test cases and then now uh, we will be preparing uh, like the end flow like system test cases and uh, uh, whenever uh, we got the build then we will be testing the system and then we will go to integration and then we will go to component if any new features come and then it it deployed to the production then we will be testing regression as well Okay. Okay, that's fine. But always we should uh, first automate the smoke scenarios because uh, that's the main functionality. Like yeah, because every time you're getting a build, you need to run it right. So yeah, we yeah. automate it, and then we can automate the regression suit. In regression suit, we should first concentrate on the system level scenario. Then we can mm -hmm. concentrate on the integration level. Scenario. Integration and then component. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, can you also tell me uh, uh, what what is the what are the two three exceptions that you have faced uh, most of the time while dealing with Selenium? Yeah, uh, so Selenium. Um, if we if I am using DDT testing, so I am using DDT testing. Uh, so if I am using DDT testing, if uh, the file path is not wrong, then I will be getting file not found. And uh, if I want to fetch the value from the empty cell, so then I will be getting uh, a null pointer exception. And if I want to fetch uh, the numeric value from from the Excel, and if I am using string get string cell value, then I will be getting exception like a illegal state exception. So I have to convert that to null number to text converter and dot to text we can use get uh, numeric cell uh, cell value and then most of the times i will be getting no such element ex exception as well so uh, and uh, element not intractable so if the element is disabled or a hide and uh, stale element exception if the element is no longer available in the dom then i will be getting a stale element exception and uh, invalid selector exception if the x path is wrong mm, got it how do you handle uh, that component which is very dynamic in nature? 
so i will be using xpath notes uh, analysis so if i use uh, xpath notes uh, then uh, uh, also with the weights we can handle okay. because we are so not giving you... uh, xpath notes we are not giving the direct uh, ta- uh, like uh, the direct um, to have to, the path so we are uh, traversing from the parent or we are we are going Mm-hmm. Uh, so, can you give me more idea on this like how do you write a xpath using uh, nodes and axes so that it can handle the uh, dynamic element can you show me any example Practice. yeah okay okay huh. can you tell me like the website anyone you want okay just show me any dynamic uh, way of writing x <laughs> my screen is visible right yeah open then okay. yeah so i'm taking amazon because it is having stocks let's see so here uh, i am searching with shoes yeah. so if i want to get a shoe wherever the coupon is present yeah. so uh, for example i'm telling so yeah. uh, so i need to get a um, element wherever the coupon is there but it won't be available to all the elements only if you for few uh, shoes only it will be applicable so here it is not applicable but uh, here for few for few shoes it is there so uh, and moreover i cannot uh, find like i cannot click this uh, with coupon right it's it's not showing so here i can click but here i cannot click so i oh. have to traverse back oh. or else in the forward so i will try to find the path for that oh. so i'm um, so with the coupon is there so i can use contains and text method so that with coupon will come oh. ah, yes so here if you see i got 8 oh. so i'm using so the you know sure here i could see with coupon so oh. i'm writing x path span go ahead my screen is my screen visible now yeah oh, okay sir so here so uh what i did i i use contains so that uh, wherever the text is with coupon it will t- it will select that and uh, now and i couldn't uh, click on this coupon right so i have to traverse uh, back so i have to use oh. xpath notes concept here oh. so i am going to this my coupon okay so i am going to here means i have to traverse back means pre- here uh, i just went back and then i could see 3037 records so i just want to get uh, one among those like a, a, either a 3 or 2 then i can give indexing
so i got a uh, one now like one to six so anything i can give if i want to select okay. then i even give like one it will give one now one more okay you're fine fine friend this is good can you also tell me how to handle otp so uh, basically we can uh, uh, refresh the screen so that uh, it will refresh or else uh, um uh, in in testing environment we won't get that uh, like uh, we have a particular one uh, like uh, the particular otp which will be shared among every every tester and we can use that so that uh, we don't face that in real time only uh, the customers will be getting okay means the dev, uh, our developer can uh, like remove it from the testing environment yeah he can do that or else it it depends on the application if they want to test even that then they will be giving some uh, otp uh, hard coded otp so that we can enter that while writing script so that it will hard coded handle. otp that's true that's true can you also tell me how to handle uh, javascript pop up yeah uh, so we have to use uh, uh, pop up right so JavaScript so we cannot uh, inspect that JavaScript pop-ups basically. So when we try to right-click, then we won't get, and the, the background will become blur. And uh, here, uh, uh, for few applications, it is mandatory to handle that. And uh, uh, so we have, uh, so here we have a minimum of uh, one method, uh, like a one option, or maximum of two. Either we have to select OK, or we have to select S yes or No. and for few applications it is like we need to some enter some text and then we have to click on okay so we have three different types of uh, pop ups here so one is like uh, we just need to select okay which means a uh, driver dot switch to alert accept so which will accept that and if you want to select no then dismiss it will dismiss and if you want to enter some text then uh, dots and keys hmm okay that's right fine pranati that's all from my side you have a good knowledge uh that is very that is very good and i'm i'm very sure that you will definitely get a job very soon and you. uh, you're you're also very confident that is also very very good thing in you and uh, i'm very confident that very soon you will come to my batch and share your share your success story too because you're you're awesome. very confident which is very good which is very Thank good you. i'm sure you have you have uh, enjoyed this course yeah, yeah i enjoyed a lot and i learned many more things that's right that's right thank you thank you pranati